Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture 5 of Hamsol Multiphysics training course. Today we will discuss modeling in electric current interface. Electric current interface is a very useful tool in Hamsol which we can use to study different electrical problems. So let's start with some definitions. So electric current interface is under AC-DC module and in this interface we solve a current conservation equation based on the Ohm's law. If you are familiar with electrical concepts, you may know what Ohm's law means. So in this modeling or in electric current interface, we consider both permittivity and conductivity of domains. So basically, we consider that a domain has some permittivity and some conductivity. Even if it is very small, but there exists some conductivity in the problem. Unlike the electrostatics interface, which only deals with the permittivity. In fact, electric currents is more interesting when we deal with electric currents and charge flow. Okay, so some of the applications of electric currents interface is when we want to find the electric field, electric current, and potential distributions in different domains. We can use that for studying electrical stimulation, especially for biomedical applications. I will solve one example about electrical stimulation for biomedical applications in the future. And we can also find the overall resistance or conductance of a domain. And finally, we can combine this interface with other physics, for example, for studying the Joule heating problems. Okay, so let's do one example and see how we can use the electric current interface. So in this study, we are going to find the resistance or conductance of a composite material as shown in this picture. And as you see, in this problem, we are dealing with a 3D design. So on the top and bottom, we have two layers and the electric voltage or current is applied through that. And inside the two layers, we have a composite structure. For example, we have some reinforcement through the solid structure. It can be different material. In this design, we, as I said, we discussed the 3D modeling we also discuss explicit definitions as an important feature in console and global properties. To review the, the problem and the concepts, so imagine we have a standard structure with the cross section A and the length of L. So the resistance with the unit of ohm is defined as rho times L over A, where rho is the resistivity as a material properties. However, the conductance is defined as sigma times A over L, where sigma is the conductivity. The unit of conductance is S, Siemens, and the conductivity is Siemens per meter. So from these two equations, we know that resistance is the inverse of conductance, and resistivity is the inverse of conductivity. And basically, resistivity and conductivity are the material properties. Okay, let's begin the modeling in the Compton software. Okay, we start with model wizard. This time we have a 3D model and after we select the space dimension, we can go to the ACDC and under electric field and currents, we go to electric currents. And this is the Ohm's law that we solve for this problem. We click on add and then we continue. The next step is to define the study and we go with the stationary here. So we click on done and let's get into the software environment and make the modeling over there. Okay, so we are here and we have to start making our geometry. As you see, we had a 3D geometry with the top and bottom layers and a composite in the center. So we can start with the top and bottom. I can see plug, cone, cylinder, sphere and more options in here. As you see, we have 3D options because we are in the 3D. So I will select the block for the top layer. Let's in the geometry, we change the dimension to centimeter. In the block, we can have centimeters at the unit. And then we have 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.02 as the height. The corner is at zero, and then we'll select it. There you go. This is the bottom layer. And as you see, in the x-direction, y-direction, and z-direction, we inserted the dimension. Then, we can right-click and then duplicate. It creates the same block, but we need to shift it upward. 
and in the z direction i will select point 5 and then we will select it so if i zoom out i have top and bottom now we have to make that composite like a structure with the matrix and the embedded fibers so for that case we need to define a plane and have a 2d geometry so if i right click and then have a work plane and we can select xy plane xz plane or yz plane so i'm gonna select zx or xz plane here doesn't matter we can go this way or that way and then we can say build selected now when we do so we define a plane which we can have our 2d design if you have worked with other 3d modeling software you may know how we can have a 2d drawing and then expand it in 3d same case here we have made a plane we can do our 2d drawing and then we can extrude or revolve or whatever we know in the 3d design in other dimension okay now in the plane geometry we can right click and there you go we have 2d options so let me select a circle as one fiber embedded inside the matrix for the radius i'm gonna use 0 0.0 one and for the position of the center i can select 0 0.05 for x and 0 0.04 as y let's see where it is so if i click on build selected there is only one circle here so if i want to make the whole circles for this domain it's gonna be so long right instead of doing that I'm gonna repeat it using a very interesting feature in console. So I'm gonna go to transforms and then array. In the array, we need to select an object. And as you see, the color is green, which means it is active. So I click on this circle and then we need to know how many we need in X and Y direction. I know for this problem, we have eight in X and eight in Y. In fact, these are the number of fibers for reinforcement of our composite. So, I selected the number 8 in both directions. We need to define the displacement, which is the distance between each fiber or each circle in 2D in the X and Y direction. So, for this problem, I'm going to use 0 0.06 in X and 0 0.06 in Y due to the symmetry right and then if click on build selected you see we have the fibers distributed through the structure or we have the circles in 2d distributed which will be eventually fibers distributed through the structure in 3d right that's it so we have built the fiber and now we have to make the matrix or the solid that surrounds the whole circles right so in that case, we can right click and then select rectangle and in here, we need to define it properly in such a way that it is located between the two layers. So the width of this rectangle is 0.48 and the height would be 0.5, right? And we need to shift it a little bit to the right hand side. So it's gonna be 0 0.02. That's it, right? So if I say build selected, then we have this block covering all the circles. So it is 2D for now, and we need to make it in 3D. So if I right click on the work plane and then go to extrude, we see the direction for extrude. And this is the work plane selected for extrude, which means that whatever we draw in this work plane, we can extrude. And what is the distance we want to extrude? In this case, is 0.5. Then I click on build selected, and there you go. We have our geometry built, and then eventually we can go to form union and build select or build all. Doesn't matter because this is the last step right so here is the geometry that we made 
So let me explain it again. So we have a top and bottom layer and between them we have a block with some reinforcement as fibers through the structure. This is just a hypothetical geometry and it's not gonna mean anything special. I just want to show you how to work with the 3D options in console. For sure, if you have a more complicated design, you can do it in other software and import it into console, right? So let's go to the next step, which is the material section. Let me right click and add materials from library. We need to define materials for the whole structure. For the top and bottom, we imagine that it's made of a metal which is fully conductive, like an electrode. You can select copper. So I right click and add two components. Okay. So because it is the first material selected, it is assigned to the whole geometry, which is not true. So we can delete and then simply click top and bottom layers. Right? But we need to define other materials. For the block, I want to just define silicon carbide as a random material with some conductivity and resistivity for sure right and as you see here sigma the electrical conductivity is 1000 siemens per meter it means that the material has some conductivity right it's not like a metal and for the fibers we can select graphite just as a material with some conductivity here right again the electrical conductivity is 3000 siemens per meter right that's it okay let's assign the materials to the domain that requires the material to be defined for the silicon carbide we select this one and for the graphite we have to assign these to the fibers but as you see it is really hard to pick one by one and it takes several times and even in some other cases we may deal with more complicated geometries now, I want to introduce a very interesting feature for console that you can use when you deal with such problems, and that is explicit. So if we go to definitions, and then we have the explicit option. In the explicit option, generally, we can select a set of boundaries, domains, or points, whatever, and then when we select those sets of boundaries, or points, or domains, we can use the whole thing as one unit. For example, I can select all these fibers and define as one set and then in the future when I want to assign something to that set, we just need to select that set, right? We don't have to select one by one. I can do it now, then you will see how it is going to work using explicit. So I clicked on explicit, I can say fiber, right? and it is going to be assigned to all these fibers through the composite structure then as you see we have domain and how we can select each one one by one i'm gonna do a smart way so i click on all domains then i remove top bottom and the block and there you go all these fibers are selected and added here so basically we define a set of domains under fiber right so in the future whatever we assign to fiber it is assigned to all of these fibers right and that's it we are good for now we can go to graphite and then in the domain we can simply select fiber and that's it as you see all fibers are selected that's very easy right instead of selecting them one by one which is an exhaustive process, right? So, as I said, it's not gonna be a real material composite. I just want to combine different materials into one structure and see how we can find some properties for this composite structure. So don't worry if the silicon carbide and graphite or copper does not make sense for the whole geometry, right? Okay, so we are good with the material and now we have to go to the physics. Okay, in the electric current, we have very interesting features. If I right click, we can see different types of boundary conditions that we can apply to the domain. For example, we can have a ground, an electric potential, we can have some floating potential, 
in case we have a metal or so, and many other types of boundary conditions. Remember, for the electrical problems, like electric current or electrostatics, we need to define a ground, because ground is the reference that the voltage is calculated based on that, and in a ground boundary condition, the voltage is zero. As you remember from the electrical engineering courses, voltage is actually a potential difference. So basically, voltage is calculated by finding the difference of electric potential from one point to a reference potential. And that's why we need a ground in the system to make it as zero. Okay, for this case, suppose that the bottom surface of this copper layer is grounded, which means that the voltage is zero right now we have to define something else and as you remember we originally want to find the overall resistance of the system when a voltage is applied up and down which is actually is not dependent to the voltage or the current because it is the structure property right so if i right click i can use other options but one of the very interesting boundary conditions in the electrical current, even in other ACDC modules, is terminal. In the terminal, you can apply different boundary conditions to the system, such as a current, a voltage. You can define it in a way that is connected to an external circuit, which is going to be through multi physics modeling, and other options. For example, I want to select voltage and select the top layer. And a uh, voltage of 1 volt is applied to the top layer of this copper material. So basically, we have ground from one side and we have 1 volt from the other side. So in that case, our physics is defined properly. Remember, when we want to find the overall resistance or conductance, we need to use the terminal boundary condition. Okay, that's it. So let's go to the mesh and build mesh. I want to make the mesh smaller than the default and I'm gonna use fine, right? Let's build meshes. There you go, the meshing is done. And remember, because it's a 3D design, we may have a longer time for meshing, okay? So now we are good with meshing and as you remember, we can use customized mesh, but in here I use the default mesh. And that's it. You can go to the stationary and then click on compute. Again, because it's a 3D model, we may have a longer calculation time. But don't worry, just bear with the software and wait for the calculation. Okay, so the problem is solved. And based on the default of the software, we have the electric potential as the result. So as you see, this shows the electric potential distribution through the 3D design and it is very interesting. However, we cannot actually catch the whole points of the results when we look into the 3D because it is hard to imagine the 3D, especially when we have a more complicated structure. So let's see how, for example, we can see some results inside the structure. For example, let's have a plane in the middle of the 3D structure and see what is the distribution of electric potential or electric field inside the material, right? Okay, so to do that, we can just go to the data set and I want you to follow my instruction because it is very useful for your own problems when you deal with 3D design. Okay, so if I go to data set and right click, the console gives me different options. I can have cut plane, I can have a cut plane in a 3D fashion, we can have a surface, we can get some results on the edge. And for here, as I want to see the cross section inside the material and at the middle of the structure in the Y direction, I'm gonna select cut plane. And over here, we can see what plane we are targeting for our results, right? So for this case, we have a plane in ZA, right? Because it's going to be in X and Z direction. 
so I can simply select that X and in what distance we are going to select the cut plane in Y coordinate in the middle of the structure so I'm gonna use point 25 that's it I can plot it so you can see the plane plotted in the middle of the structure and now we want to explore some results on this plane so if I go to results and then right click for now because we have defined a 2d plane we go to 2d plot options right remember if we want to capture some 3d features we go to 3d plot but now we have a 2d plot here. so where in the 2d plot we have cut plane one so imagine we have multiple cut planes or we have defined a surface in data set so we can have more options here but for now we have only one option and what do we want to see we click on surface so the default is the voltage and we click on plot and we will see what's going on right so this shows the voltage through the structure so as you see we applied one volt from one side and ground on the other side that's why we have zero here and one there and the voltage is showing this behavior but we don't actually need to see the electric potential because we know how we apply the potential let's see how the electric field is going over there so if i go to the electric current when i use the expression and then i scroll down we can find electric fields as you may remember from previous examples we can have different options when we go to the expression to find the results right under electric we have electric field norm and because you know electric field is a vector so we need to use the normalized one to show it in a scalar fashion right for the normalized electric field we click and then we click on plot and wait for the result there you go very interesting as you see the electric field norm is shown in this structure as we expected for a pure conductive metal the electric field is zero however because we have some resistance on these domains we can see some electric field distributed that's it and then eventually we wanted to find the electrical conductance or resistance of the whole structure so to do that the electrical conductance is a number for the whole system considering that the electricity is going to be applied from this side and the other side so we can just go to the derived values we worked with this menu before but in this case instead of having an average or integration or max or min we need to use global evaluation right because it's a global parameter and then we go through the expressions under electric current and terminals see we have the terminal option here this is because i told you we need to use terminal as the boundary condition if you want to find the conductance or resistance if we use say for example a electric potential we may not have this option and then we have the conductance there you go we click on it and it is added here the unit is siemens and then we click on evaluate and if we go down we have this number conductance of the structure considering this direction for applying the electricity right keep in mind this number so you might be asking how we can find the resistance so basically you can find the inverse of this number to find the resistance in ohms or we can go back to terminals and instead of voltage if you use current you can use any number i'm gonna use 0.1 doesn't matter right you can remember from your electrical courses right and then after we do that we can go back to a stationary and then click on compute and wait for the calculation there you go the problem is solved considering the new boundary condition which is the current i did that because i want to show you how we can find the resistance so if I go to the global evaluation that I made before and now 
I use the expression and under electric current terminals, in this case, we have resistance. So see, when we apply the voltage, we had conductance, and now we apply current, we have resistance. But not a big problem, because they are the inverse of each other, and they don't depend to the applied voltage or current. They depend on the structure and the materials, right? So I click on resistance, and then we add it here. So if I click evaluate, I get this number here. If you just find the inverse of this number, you find this number. Or if you calculate the inverse of this number, you find the resistance, right? You can do a simple calculation to verify that, right? So I think we solved the problem and found what we were looking for, which was the overall conductance or resistance of the structure. We did a 3D model and we used the electric currents to solve. Okay, that's good. If you enjoyed, please subscribe to our channel to find next interesting videos. Thank you.